inside now. Yeah, I'm trying really hard to take a deep breath and relax. I think it might be almost time. Hang on, I'm, I'm just gonna double down. Double down. Are we safe here with you tonight? Green, yes. Red, no. You can be honest. Are we safe with you right now? Green, yes. Red, no. It all started with a video game. Where are you? Where are you? I'm right Where behind you. you. Oh I'm my right God. behind you. I'm okay. Right behind okay. You. Oh! <laughs> During the 2020 <laughs> pandemic lockdown, I invited my buddy T to join me in Phasmophobia, a heart elevating ghost hunting experience from Kinetic Games. What came next was a fan favorite on my Twitch channel Phasmophobia with the Phil Rossi Scream Team. And sure, we had fun. But as we started to see the end of the pandemic, I got a call from Phil. How would you like to do this for real? And now, here we are. Just two dads living their best life while investigating the afterlife. TWA Flight 514 was one of many post-Thanksgiving holiday flights scheduled to depart on Sunday, December 1st, 1974 from Indianapolis, Indiana, a brief stop in Columbus, Ohio, and finally to Washington, D.C. The flight was scheduled to land at Washington National Airport, located in Crystal City, Virginia, but due to high crosswinds from the east and heavy wind gusts preventing safe operations, TWA Flight 514 was diverted to the relatively new airport, Washington Dulles International, located outside of D.C. in Dulles, Virginia. The flight was being vectored for a non-precision instrument approach to Dulles Runway 12. Air traffic controllers cleared the flight down to 7,000 feet before clearing them for an approach with TWA 514, you are cleared for a VOR DME approach to Runway 12. The jetliner began a descent to 1,800 feet, shown on the first checkpoint of the charted approach. The cockpit voice recorder would reveal flight captain Richard I. Brock had been consulting the flight charts during descent, noting on the flight recorder an apparent discrepancy. The minimums were 3,400 feet until Round Hill, but both captain and crew agreed that their clearance from Dallas Approach Control permitted them to descend to this initial approach altitude. At 11.08 a.m., an alarm sounded briefly in the cockpit, signaling that they were now at a target altitude of 1,800 feet. Less than a minute later, the cockpit recorder captured the altitude alarm triggering, indicating deviations between 100 to 200 feet due to heavy downdrafts and reduced visibility in snow. This was followed by another alarm, warning that Flight 514 was only 500 feet above the deck. Captain Brock ordered First Officer Thomas C. Kretschik to get some power on and get back up to 1,800 feet. The cabin recorder captured the altimeter alarm sounding again, warning the cockpit crew that they were now only 100 feet above the ground. At Washington Dulles International, the tower noticed the plane's altitude was much lower than was expected. At 11.09 a.m., tower control called. TWA 514, say your altitude. There was no response. All this happened within a span of three minutes of TWA Flight 514 reaching their tower-approved vector. At an approximate speed of 230 knots, 265 miles per hour, or 425 kilometers per hour, Flight 514 impacted the western slope of Mount Weather, Virginia, 
at an elevation of 1,670 feet. All 92 aboard, 85 passengers, and seven crew members were killed. The National Transportation Safety Board launched a full inquiry on exactly what happened. While Dulles perceived from ground-to-air communications the Flight 514 was not on a radar approach, the flight crew believed, also based on ground-to-air comms, that they were on a radar approach and therefore understood their approach clearance meant they could safely descend to an altitude of 1,800 feet. During the investigation, it became known that the Federal Aviation Administration was aware of this persistent misunderstanding between pilots and control towers. No corrective measures were put into place until after 92 lives were lost. The legacy of TWA Flight 514 is first heard in the terminology between pilots and controllers, which has been redefined dramatically. Additionally, ground proximity warning systems were not standard on airliners. By the end of 1975, all commercial aircraft flying in the United States were equipped with such systems. And finally, broadcast media outlets were compelled to take a closer look at how they cover airline disasters. Two Indiana Senators, Richard Luger and Birch Bayh, were scheduled to be on the flight but were notably absent from the manifest. As these government officials were accounted for and no other lawmakers were present on the flight, the media reported there was no one of importance on the plane. This brought about a backlash from surviving family members of those on the flight. Also overlooked by the media among the passenger manifest was Roscoe C. Rock Cartwright, America's first African-American field artilleryman promoted to Brigadier General. A highly decorated soldier, Brigadier General Cartwright's honors included two Legions of Merit, three Bronze Stars, and a Meritorious Service Medal. TWA Flight 514 is commemorated with a modest memorial honoring the flight crew and passengers, and the documentary Diverted, the story of TWA Flight 514, now playing on YouTube. On ascending Highway 601 of Mount Weather, you can catch a glimpse of the rock Flight 514 struck, decorated with crosses and offerings a site easily mistaken for makeshift memorials to car crash victims seen across the United States. What remains of that crash site today, however, is open not only for question, but intense debate. What got us to the crash site of TWA Flight 514? So uh, back last, I mean, this must have been the tail end of last winter, when I had done several Don't Turn Around episodes by that point, and mm -hmm. I was experiencing the itch, the desire to get out there and do, uh, do some investigations. It was before we had really even talked about it where I started trying to figure out, are there any places that are close by that I could maybe go to during the daytime right. to check out? And TWA crash site came up uh, pretty much immediately. So when you called me, um, it was at, at the beginning of the day, I remember you called me and you said, we're heading out to this crash site and we want to know if you want to, if you want to come with us. And you, you, we were, as we're get going right before we went out there, I want to say you told me about the, the documentary TWA uh, diverted t the, the story of yes. uh, flight 514. Because that night when mm -hmm. we got back, that's, when we knew we, we needed to know more right. about this spot and we started Googling and the, and the diverted documentary came up and, and we watched it that night. And I watched it right before we went out there. Yeah. Right before we went out there. And um, it was the outcropping of rock. I remember when I was watching Diverted, I was like, we've driven by that several times, Pip. And then when we got out there, I'm like, yeah, this is it. The crash site covers a distance uh, in an area that's uh, roughly two football fields. Right. Where we were, we were just surrounded by trees. We were just surrounded yeah. by trees, mm -hmm. except for this one area. But the one thing I remember standing out like a sore thumb in this nearly perfect circle that we were standing in was this large, I, I don't want to say tree trunk, because it really wasn't a tree trunk. It was more like the remains of a tree. Yeah. And I remember the the tree looked singed mm -hmm. and i also remember the the angle of that top part it was it was a, a clean cut yeah and, and this was a, a good sized yeah tree it was this huge when that plane came in that was already a very that was an old tree i yeah. mean let's face it all the trees on that mountain were old at the time right right i mean this is one of the oldest mountain ranges if not 
part of the oldest mountain range in the entire exactly. world. This is old exactly. land. Right. And so we, we go into the middle of this and um, we, we crack into the gear. And again, this is where we have to, we have to talk about what we brought. Let's break it down. So let's break it down. Um, we brought Simon. We brought, we brought, we brought back uh, the Flux 2. And I'm, yeah, I'm going I'm to save my thought about that uh, in a minute. So we brought that in. I had my, I had my video camera. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had my camera as well. Which is still with us today. It's, yes, it's still going. Good on you. <laughs> um, we had two H fours. Two H fours. Uh, what What else do we have? Uh, we had uh, an H one N. Right. We had uh, the Evistar L one five seven digital recorder. Coming up on a five minute paranormal. That's right. Uh, and uh, oh, and and your your new investment. This was the debut of the REM pod. Right. right? So this was this was that's going to be a future a future uh, five minute paranormal, yeah. isn't it, Phil? Yes, it is. Too. Okay, good. <laughs> and uh, and so and so that was. I think that was the. Oh, and then we had the K two meter. We had the K two meter as well. So already our our gear had 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 mm -hmm. grown a bit, and that idea of okay, we're going to film as much as we can this go around. Yeah. First clip of the night. This is what I would call the establishing shot, and um, what you're going to see in this clip is that I found what looks like a well pipe, and it was the best flat surface. That I could that I could set the uh, the the flux two on, and this is how you basically set it up. If I come up to this, it's a little bit That's of show and tell. When you come up to it, if you come up on the other side, it does this. And you notice how close I'm getting to this. So I'm going to back over here. And I want to see if you can do that. You can actually making the, the red light go off. Can you yeah, the you heard the red light go off. I'd like to see if you can make the red and green light go off. Could you do that for me? And there it goes. That was the green light going off. Was that after you had just set it up? After I just so set it up. What about the red light? Can you make the red light go off? I know you can do it. But thank you for that. If you can make the red light go off, you and I can have a conversation. See, this is one of the things you have to do with the K, with sorry, with the uh, with the what Flux you Two, is you have to basically set up the parameters. Yeah. You know, not just not just can you make the red light go off, calibrating it, but also setting up questions and explaining to whatever's there with you. This is how it works. Yeah. And already it's gone off more more times than it did at Belgrave. And it didn't take long for it. Not really, not at all. I think we'd been out there maybe five if you want ten, me to yeah. back five, away. Minutes. I can back away if you make the red light go off. And there it goes. And there it goes. And there it goes. And of course, you two were not there to see that. <laughs> the red light just went off. You kind of have to test the waters and say, okay, you've made the green light go off. Can you make the red light go off? And then once that happens, then you can start establishing um, <clears throat> trigger questions. And, and, and just to uh, piggyback on that too, I think also what instantly makes this clip and this interaction compelling is that, and again, we're not saying definitively that this is what was happening, but the fact that you said you know, green light, green light goes off, and then you come back around and you say, okay, if you do the red light, I'll back up, and, right. and the red light goes off. Uh, so it's... It's compelling. It is compelling. It is very compelling. I think what just amazed me about the performance of the uh, of, of the Flux Two was how responsive it was to not just me but to all three of us, like right here. My friends Phil and Tina are very happy that my device is working. <laughs> <laughs> thank wow! You so thank much. you. That was so nice. That was very kind of you. Would you be? We asked if we can go up there. Open to trying another device if I brought it close 
Bye. Green for yes, red for no. You're going to hear that a lot in this episode. Thank you so much for doing that. I know. That's awesome. That was really awesome. You'll notice, too, that when, when, when the flux is going off, you'll hear the, the, the rapid beeping. That basically means that's, that there's, it, it's detecting something getting closer and closer and closer to the device. And one of the things that I've been trying to do through this entire uh, investigation, because it is one of the things that I think is the challenge of this investigation is we were outdoors. And I just wanted to make sure there was no insects, nothing crawling yeah. on it yeah. that was triggering it off. And as you can see in the video, there's nothing there. Yeah. And when you first played that for me, too, and it was the rapid yeah. escalating beep, because we're accustomed to hearing that sound on investigations when we're getting set up or moving stuff around. Right. And I was waiting for the, that was me. I was waiting for that. <laughs> and it didn't come. <laughs> And it's, I had to process that for a minute yeah, because yeah. that was quite the response. And and uh, and it was responding to the fact that I had been there. Uh, Tina had taken a couple of shots, walked away. Tina, of course, our our official photographer of old spirits. Make sure to follow her on Christina Rossi Photography. I got that right, didn't I? Yes, you did. And you got yourself points, and maybe I got some points by proxy. There we well. go. Even better. Even better. But the, um, but but yeah. I mean, that was that was the um, that was the thing. Is suddenly suddenly the the um, the flux was the star. And before you before you start yeah. this next clip too, if that was a bug that was approaching it, because yeah. it would have to be on it would have to be on approach. It would have to be a hornet. It would have to be <laughs> one big ass bug. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And we exactly. would not have sounded as happy. It, it's just when it comes to technology and outdoors, it's always a crapshoot. Yes. And what again, going back to to the flux, I will say that I don't think it was. I don't think it was. It was any anything like gnats. Or, or bugs or no. anything. I saw nothing crawling around these things. And then, we, so, so all three of us are, are here. We're, we're we're hanging out with uh, with the with the flux, and um, and we had this little exchange. I not only did I think that the MVP of this particular investigation was was Simon, but I think Tina was a favorite. Tina was a favorite because let's let yeah. l l we'll let the clip do the do the speaking for us. Maybe you feel crowded. We're under a little pressure with three people standing here. That's fine. Thanks for making that go off while I was here. But I'm going to give you guys some space. This seems very, the spirit seems very comfortable with the two of you. I'm just going to go back over Do here. Do you want one of us to move away? Green for yes, red for no. So the higher tone want? is is green. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna let Phil stay. I I I've, I've talked to you enough. Are you okay talking to my friend Phil over here? Trust me, he's a good guy. He is such a good guy. I'm a PR agent. So even can can, I like can we I like have it. you talk to Phil? I'll turn. Green for yes, red for no. He might even sing to you if you're nice. I shouldn't put I shouldn't put that kind of pressure on you. I, Green I, for I, yes. I should not. Red for no. Put that kind of pressure. Listen, <laughs> Larry. I did not sing, for the record. Do you want just the guys to be here with you? Green for yes. Red for no. We want to know which person you want to leave so you have enough space and feel comfortable since you want one of us to leave. Right. Do you want me to leave? Green for yes, red for no. Do you want me to walk away? Green for yes, red for no. And I would say this is the biggest challenge of the flux in the field. You have to wait. You, you have want to me to walk away. You have to be really patient. Wait, yes. wait for those responses. For no. 
They're worth the wait. They're worth the wait. They are. And you'll, you'll, you'll see why in just a second. Since we didn't get an answer, I'm going to step away and leave you with these two nice gentlemen. Is that okay? Green for yes. Red for no. Okay, I'm going to walk away just because we didn't get an answer. That's okay. <laughs> I think they want you to come back. Oh, oh, Sorry. <laughs> and and that, I mean that was I was really impressed with how responsive it was to Tina. I'm starting to wonder if 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 our wives are like spirit whispers because they love talking to Pip and apparently they also want to talk to Tina. I'm gonna ask again, do you want us to leave? Green for yes, red for no. And then, and then that. Well, it just said no here. It just said no oh, here. Did you see well. the REM pod just went off too? Yep. Would you rather not talk to the boys? Here it comes, here it comes. Would you rather have the young lady in our presence? Talk to you? <laughs> Instantly. Boom. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Man. We want the hot Colombian here. Yeah, I've got to watch out for the living and the uncle. <laughs> I got I got people threats that I can't even see. <laughs> that's a that's a fantastic clip because that's that also shows the overlapping of what was happening. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, because I love you got me saying I just heard an audible voice yeah. say no. And then nothing that off. went off. And then you hear the REM pod go off. And then hey. and then hey, do, do, do you want do you want Tina to come over here? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. You know, I mean, yeah. it, full full on. Full on. Now, speaking of your investigation, what I love about this particular clip is you get a perspective. And you'll see what I mean when when we play it. There's not many places to sit. Well, I'm just going to walk a little bit. Maybe feel better if I'm on this side. Yeah, I told you, Phil. Okay, you I caught just... you caught three EVPs, not one, three. I'm having a T. Morris moment that all of my hair. And that's where we were standing. That's so, where we were standing. All of my hair is just <laughs> stood on and it's literally up on the back of my, mo of my neck this at this moment. Buffering. But it's buffering, isn't here, it? It's here, buffering. Here's the thing. Every hair on the, my body is buffering at this <laughs> moment. Yeah, my body's buffering. My body and mind are buffering. My body and my mind are buffering. <laughs> I have been for months and months trying to determine what that first EVP was saying, the one that's kind of almost melodic, because uh, that was one of the first ones I caught. I didn't even have my headphones on at the time when I heard that one. Now, I am going to say, I think a lot of the EVPs that we capture in here, mm -hmm. they're going to sound better with headphones. What is also you know, interesting, I mean, it's probably the wrong word for it, but in a place like Crescent or at the asylums, and I'm not taking away from the tragedies that happened in these places and the right. lives that were lost, but it was lives lost over the span of years where here, this was almost a hundred lives that were lost in an instant. And they never saw it coming. And they were in an the, instant. Yeah. And I think that, I, I think this is, this, this clip in particular was, was, my, was my moment. This was in the moment with, with me and Tina and, uh, and the, the reaction from Simon here. Do you have friends from the flight that are with you here right now? Green for yes, red for no.
Do you have family that's with you? I got friends. I've got friends. That one struck me. Yeah. That one struck me. And you could hear your voice. Yeah. 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 I didn't it's hear just, it. it. That was when I was, and, and suddenly I felt, I did not feel alone. And what I mean by alone is that, you know, there's, there's you, there's me, there's Tina, and we're in this, we're in this clearing. But when that happened, I, I, that was where I felt the second most strongest presence. We're going to talk yeah. about the, the strongest presence a little later. Yeah. All right, Phil. Now, um, we're going we're gonna to part the, we're going we're gonna to part the curtain, curtain, go behind the scenes here. Um, we do have a live audience, and I bring this up because of this clip. Your wife, Tina, is watching. Yeah. And I'm going to be watching you during this clip because this is this is this is one of the longest clips we have to to review tonight. And I just I'm just going to let this clip do the talking. Okay. I'm of course I'm going to still watch watch your reaction to it. And I'm a little nervous to be you, honest. You with should you. be. You I'm should be nervous. because well, uh, like I said, would you be all right if we came back? I'm going to watch you. Dark. Green for yes, red for no. No. Straight away. Straight out of the box. No, you do not want us coming back. You know what? I'm going to uh, ask that again. And this is your influence closer. on me. This is your influence on me, Rossi. You keep asking, Would you which be I'm cool okay with. <laughs> ask until you get a different answer. <laughs> and talk to you again when it was dark. Green for yes. Red for no. I just want to get a confirmation. Would you be okay if we came back to talk to you when it was dark? Green for yes, red for no. I just need a confirmation. Okay, I'm going to take that as your conf. Okay, now, see, now you're being, now you're being indecisive. You're saying yes and no. Who's to say is answering yes is the same as the uh, whoever's answering no? Yeah. All right. Ninety-two people out there. I'm going to ask you, no. Right. It's almost like an argument. Okay, there's point. more no's than yeses here. So I'll ask you one more time, but this time it's going to be a little different. Is it not safe for us to come back at night? Green for yes, it's safe. Red for no, it is not safe. My wife has given me the eyes. Right. Right. <laughs> and it just beeped twice. And it just beeped twice. It went red and then beeped again before it could even reset. Yeah. You know, if you're... You know what? It, we appreciate that. We appreciate that. And I'm that saying that to the spirits. I am not saying that to your wife. We if really I said, hey, that. I appreciate you, Tina, she would slap so. me to no, Second City. You do appreciate her. Yeah, I do. Do you want to take a break, Phil, or you, uh... Okay. I'm actually feeling hungry. <laughs> um, if we come back... Tonight, I know you have been taking the game. Again, it will not be out of not taking your warning seriously. Um, or if you don't want us to come back, and we do come back for a little while, it's not because we're like sweet talking at this point. Yep. Right. No, no, just no, just wait, just wait. 
Watch this. About this space, and if we do come back after dark, I, I really doubt we'll be here for a very long time. But it is just to understand the different energies that are here. But I hope you will understand that. Are you okay with that? Green for yes, red for no. Is there anything you'd like to add, Mrs. Rossi? I told you. <laughs> oh my God. So I will be honest, at this at this stage, even though the message was coming through loud oh, and clear. Loud and clear. And, and and here's the thing, there's another minute left on this clip. I, I cut it out. Yeah. But there's another minute on this clip of you still trying to sweet talk a yes out of there. And, and again, but, but the thing that I do not remember when we were out there was how many times we were told, no, do not come back at night. Yeah. No. I, and honestly, <laughs> for me, much like the child, basically, that I was sounding like, right. no was going in one ear and out the other because I was pretty much dead set on going back at night. I just, and maybe it was some other force that was kind of it's, drawing me in, for lack of a better You're trying to word. sweet talk yourself again. No, honestly, no, I no. just. You were trying to sweet talk I yourself again. I had to go again. back. I had I, to go I back. I know you had to go and back. And so did we go back? Yeah. Yeah, we, we did. Went back. And it was both of us. I didn't go back alone. No. It takes two to tango, my friend. We were told repeatedly, and we were told repeatedly by your wife. I would like to state for the record that when I was coming back from the experience we're about to relive on here, I would try, I wanted to talk to my wife about it. I wanted her to stay on the phone with me, but in her own words, and I quote, what do you want? I'm playing Avengers right now with the Kellys. Yeah. Priorities, I guess. So anyway. Though we, I think, I think. Had don't you be, dare stick up for my wife. Don't you dare stick up for my wife. Now, now I'm getting this from your <laughs> wife and, <laughs> and I don't know what to do. <laughs> Why don't we just green for yes, red, red for no? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, while I don't regret the experience that we had, I do regret that we weren't smarter. Mm. Because, right. well, let, let's let's so we get out there and and let's let let's let's so, so paint the scene. It's that kind of country darkness. You know, it's yeah. that it's that it's that yeah. uh, it's that darkness where you are not near any small town. You are not near any. It is it is yeah. dark. We're on the side of a mountain, right? In the trees, right? We we get out there. We set up the gear. Everything feels fine up to this point. And then I I said, you know what? I'm going to be the brave one because I I didn't realize this when I was until I was looking at the mm -hmm. at the footage. Mm -hmm. I was the brave one, and I, I started the, the questions. Yeah, you were ready to roll. And yeah. I said, have And the it. minute I finished the first question, the whole mood changed. It was remarkable yeah. the way... And you can't really, you can't really describe that. And again, for this one, you may want to listen with headphones. Yeah. But you, we do have captions for for what we picked up, which I must have watched this clip several times over. If you want to talk to us, you can make the lights of that device go red or green. <laughs> I'm just getting chills right now. <laughs> the fact that it sang it, and then yeah. this. Is 
And I think this captures the entire. You want to talk to us. The entire tonal change. Yeah. But then we got one more thing here. One more thing. No. Green for yes. The fact that the fact that we had a voice singing to us, and the fact that we had that that response of well yes and then immediately no and here's the thing too because in that clip you you hear me saying i'm just something along the lines of i just heard a voice yeah because at that stage because once we had moved to that other side we had been interacting a little bit more and i was hearing all kinds of voices at that point all around us I and did not, and I all I heard, it did all not I heard make me feel exactly comfortable hearing these voices. It wasn't like the other disembodied voices that we've heard, say, in Gettysburg that we yeah. heard with our own ears. Right. It was there was just something about about these sounds that I was hearing, and I don't think it was my imagination one because some of the voices that come through on here were what I heard. Well, like time. like this one right here, like this one right here. Are you one? All I could hear with all, all I could hear were the, were the crickets. Yeah, now, the crickets good, and cicadas, and that's all I heard. Now this was another one you picked up. Yeah, so this is a good uh, headphone one. Uh, again, this was I was listening in the headphones when I caught this, and, right. and it's not because it's a quiet EVP. I just think it's that the, just the frequency that this voice is at. It doesn't project through the speakers so well because it's competing with everything else. Yeah. I found again, it that's, out that, much again, more again, again that's the that's the perils of an outdoor investigation. Because yeah. now we're competing with with the nightlife. Right. Yeah. 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 Because yeah, so I tell you, it did. Maybe it's where I'm sitting, but it jumped out at me from over here. What's that? The daddy jumped right out. Yeah, and 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 the thing is, is that for me, when I heard that, I was like, yeah, that's the sound of a that's the sound of a child. And there was a child on the manifest, um, about three. Yeah. Uh, The kid's name was Benji, and again, it was it's that question, it's that lilt. And I will say this, though, it was very disorientating, again, hearing these voices, but I started to feel that sort of washy kind of feeling right. out there as well. And I, I want to say one comment about about the clip that you just played right. with the, like, the, the lilt kind of question voice sounding like a, you know, a young child. Yeah. Um, and again... This is the first time we've really talked in depth oh, yeah. about this oh, particular yeah. clip. Yeah. But man, does that, again, make me feel really just sad because with our children when they were young and they're asking yeah. us a question in that voice or saying our name with that voice. You stop everything you do. Some, exactly. You stop everything is, you do and you're wrong. like, what's going on? Something is wrong. And, but, the, but that's the other problem about all of these clips at night. There, there are conflicting energies there. There are there are polar opposites out there. We've got we've got voices that are calling out to us. There are also voices that are um, somewhat condescending to us. And I'm just going to throw this out here right now too. You know, we are hearing these voices and we're interpreting them as what we believe was communicating with us. Yeah. But there is nothing, there's no evidence that no. that was indeed a little three-year-old sad little boy. No. It could have been something mimicking. It, yeah. When, when we were out there at night, that's what it felt like. It felt like we'd opened a door and I wasn't sure we could close it. And then we have yeah. this moment. Yeah. Then we have this moment. Yeah, I'm trying really hard to 
take a deep breath and relax. Yeah, I think it might be almost time. Hang on, I'm, not, I'm just gonna double down. Double down. Are we safe here with you tonight? Green, yes. Red, no. You can be honest. Are we safe with you right now? Green, yes. Red, no. Yeah, did you, did you hear that in my voice? Yeah, it's not. <laughs> well, cause in, I, in that <clears throat> moment, it's almost like when that thunderstorm's about to open up. Yeah. You know, the energy was approaching this, like, peak of this crescendo. It's critical. And we both knew that... We're done. We're done. We're done. Yeah, we're, we're done. done. We, need, we, need to, we need to leave yesterday. Yeah. And... Um, I'm looking at the timestamp right now. It's 9:48, if I remember correctly. When we, when the early, the earliest clip was around 9:30. Yeah. And I thought I'd been out there for at least half an hour. I believe, at least according hour. to my recorders, like the length <clears throat> of the full yeah. length file. Yeah. It was about 13 minutes and Somebody 50 13, seconds. 13 and 16. And minutes, yeah. I felt like it was 45 minutes at Easily. least. Easily. That we were out Easily. there. Um, and the fact that we never got an answer to that question answered the question. That was a hundred percent our answer. And while, question. and yeah. while I'm, I'm again going to say, I, I wish we had been smarter and just heeded the warning of, uh, that they have gotten earlier at the same time. I will argue that we were smart enough to say at that point. I'm not. I'm not ready to to face whatever's here. That's the thing, and I. I stand by our decision to go out there. I think it was a valuable experience, on many levels, but we are not going back. In, we are not going back. I will say this: in reviewing the evidence and going back through the experience of the nighttime, I'm now leaning a bit more toward red for no. So we got a lot to unpack yes. about the crash side of TWA Flight 514, but I think it's safe to say, you haunted. haunted. Now, here's some things that I have issues with. And I get it. You know, you have land, you want to sell it, you want to develop it. Where I have a problem with this particular place, this, this private property, because that's what it is. It is private property now. They were building a house. I know we can't go back there. It's not just a matter of not going right. back there because, of, because for safety purposes, but also because we could be breaking the law. Right, and that's you know, the first rule of old spirits. Yes. So you don't break the law. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that, that's, that, is, that is the top priority. If you don't have permission, no, yeah, you no, don't, you're not there. No you're investigation there. is worth breaking no. the law. In the, the documentary Diverted, you see a memorial. You see on the slab of rock, you see a memorial bolted into the ground. Oh yeah. It is a big, it, it's got all the names of everybody there. If you do a search for Memorial TWA Flight 514, pictures show comes up. Comes up in the pictures, yeah? yeah? Yeah. That's not there anymore. Yeah. Were you able to figure out? I have, I have tried to find out uh, in various internet search strings. I've even reached out to uh, a local news chapter oh, really? to try yeah. to find out if they want to do some better investigating than I can do because all I can see is up to 2015, there was a monument there. Yeah. And then it's after 2015 that it's not showing up. There have been several um, 
paranormal groups that have gone out there yeah. in 2017. There was a guy who went out there in 2016. They take shots of the rock and it's bare. Yeah. It is it is it has been something has happened to the memorial. Yeah. And I'm really hoping that it found a home somewhere because That's what I'm hoping. Well, um, cuz the alternative is the alternative is they got rid of it and the fact that there are 92 souls that lost their lives there and this was a this this particular crash had a cascade of different things that 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 happened um because of it they yeah. changed the way uh, the, they changed the way the planes and air traffic control talk to each other. They made uh, yeah. ground proximity equipment a standard. It yeah. wasn't a standard it's in '74. Mind blowing. Yeah, <laughs> and 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 then of course news media they had to take a step back and go, well, how are we covering these events? Because a lot of people took umbrage when we said no one of importance was on the yeah. flight. When you had the first uh, African American that had been promoted to brigadier general, you had. Um, the Federal Bureau of Investigation's third female agent yeah. on that flight. You had you had friends, you, you had, had friends, loved ones, family. You had children. You're going to tell flight. someone that mm. their parent wasn't wasn't, it wasn't important. Wasn't important. Yeah. Wasn't important. Yeah. So it's it changed a lot for the better at and a very yeah. high cost. But this monument is right. gone. This monument yeah. is gone now. And I want to make this very clear. We are not advocating that you get in touch with whoever is living on this site and saying, where is the monument? Yeah. We are not yeah. telling you to do that. Because they probably don't know. This particular, uh, the, the, uh, along with that, along with the fact that no one seems to know what happened to this memorial, which is a travesty in itself. Yeah. Mm. I think the other takeaway from this, uh, for me, was not all investigations are going to be fun you know yeah it wasn't bell grove it wasn't um it wasn't done laura it wasn't <clears throat> gettysburg there was something sinister out there something absolutely sure sinister. felt like it yeah sure felt like it and what about you an investigation might lead down a darker path that you're not expecting and that you can't really even fathom because every investigation is a different experience Absolutely. every investigation we've been on yeah has been a different experience mm -hmm. and I would hazard to say you know these dark places can certainly catch you off guard and it was something that I've talked that I had talked about with guests on the podcast but it's not something that you can really appreciate until you experience yeah. one of those gripping moments of just knowing that you are not in a in a good good in a good place in that moment for I, whatever reason, whatever energy's interacting with you, it's almost in indescribable. And I would I would add to that I would add to that that your instincts matter. Trust your intuition. Yeah. If and you if you think that there's something off, there is something yeah. wrong. You, you 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 need to pull the ejection mm -hmm. handle and get out of there. Your instincts do matter in paranormal investigation, and they're there for a reason. Yeah. yeah. And then to be slightly controversial along those lines, you know, my intuition led me to taking us back there, and I feel like on a lot of different levels, this was an important experience for us to have. I totally agree. And that shan't be repeated, we dare I We don't have say. to repeat it. We do um, not have to repeat it. No, 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 no. I, I totally agree. I, like I said, I don't regret, I don't regret the, the experience. I, <clears throat> I, but I can't say that we weren't warned. <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah, and, yeah. and here, you know what, and then I will say another takeaway is that when the spirits and your wife are saying, hey, I got a bad feeling about this drop. Yeah, you know, yeah. That's not what they say really about every drop. No, it's no, there. no, they, no they, they don't yeah. say that on, no, they don't, yeah. they so, don't, they don't. And, and they're not four weeks yeah. and out. You so know? listen to your team. Yeah. You know, listen to your team. Uh, you might find yourself in a situation where something is trying to lead you down that dark path and for whatever reason it's attached to you or it's singling you out. 
And so in those moments, rely on the people that you're investigating with. That is gonna wrap up our episode on TWA Flight 514. We really appreciate you all watching the content, enjoying the content with us. Make sure to leave a comment. If you've got a question, if you've got a request from us here over at Old Spirits, please feel free to drop us a line. You can also visit us on TikTok and Instagram at oldspiritsinvestigations.com. Please make sure to like and subscribe and ensure your notifications are set so that you know whenever we put up new content. Again, thank you so much for joining us at Old Spirits Investigations. And we'll see you in the field. <laughs>